Okay, so welcome to this special tutorial. As I had mentioned in the class, this is in preparation of the makeup quiz exam, which we will be conducting tomorrow morning from 10.30 to 12.30. Okay. The portion for the quiz tomorrow is same as the portion for the original quiz. So some of you will remember that portion was the basic concepts in programming that we had discussed. These basic concepts include the init data types, which are internal data types of uh, uh, C++. So what are those data types? Int, float, and char. These are the three data types. There is a Boolean data type, which we have not discussed. We will not bother about it right now. But how are these numbers represented? What are the operations on these numbers? How do we define variables? How locations are get, uh, get allocated and so on? And more importantly, if there are expressions involving these variables, so x plus y minus z divided by something, etc., etc., how are those expressions evaluated? If there is a mixture of integer and floating point, how does the conversion happen? If there is a char variable, then can it be converted into something else? These are some of the issues that we need to understand. The assignment operation is the one which allocates a value to a variable. So we will see the assignment statement very briefly. These are of course very preliminary things. The more important thing is, as we write instructions in our program, they are executed. And normally they are executed sequentially, so one after another. And that is what we call sequential execution. But we may want to conditionally execute some statements. We want to say if something is greater than this, then do this, otherwise do this. For that, there are instructions in C++, which are if, if else, if else if, and a special instruction called switch. So these are the instructions which permit us to specify in our program that execute this only if this condition is true, otherwise execute something else. Equally important is an extension of this decision making flow control, where not only we want to conditionally do this or do that, but we want to say iteratively do this. Keep on doing this again and again and again and again and again. And for example, if we want to add terms of a series, now if there are n terms, we are not going to write n instructions. We want to execute a simple body which will iterate n times and find out sum of n terms. Such iterative control is available in C++ through three specific instructions. One is called the while loop, the other is called the for loop, and the last one is called the do while. These are the three instructions for iterative execution. Having understood these and seen some of the examples which we will illustrate here, we then move on to a concept of handling elements of the same type. So suppose I have 2000 integer values, I have 500 floating point values, say marks, and I want to do some computations using those, then how do I store those values? For that you have the notion of an array. Array is a collection of elements, so we will see how arrays are defined, how they are used. In particular, the iterative structures that we would have discussed are most important in handling arrays. Because you don't handle arrays element by element, you handle arrays through a loop structure. More importantly, an array of characters is regarded in C++ as a string, like a name or whatever symbols that you want to give. So we will study how such strings are handled to store, let's say, names of people, to find out which character occurs where, to find out what is the composition of string to copy one string from one, uh, one array to another, to read names, etc., etc. These are the typical activities that you do with these strings. And finally, we have multidimensional arrays. We had taken one example of an image processing in the class. I may or may not discuss these multidimensional arrays depending upon how much time it takes. And if I get to discuss it, then I will include a question on that in the quiz. If I don't get to discuss it, then I will not have a question. Okay, so you need not worry from a perspective of the examination.
So we start with the discussion on basic data types. So can you tell me what are the basic data types which C++ supports? Sorry? Int. So int stands for what? Integer values. How much of storage is occupied by one integer value? 4 bytes. Sometimes normally 4 bytes. But sometimes it could be either 2 or even 8. The integers that you handle on Ubuntu using C++ are all 4 byte integers. Okay. If you write a short int, then it may become 2 bytes and long int could be 8 bytes. And there is also a unsigned care which is 1 byte which is also treated as an integer. So strictly speaking, 1, 2 or 8 is the correct description. Ordinarily, however, it is 4 bytes. And the internal representation, again with which we don't have to do much, but we note that it is represented as a binary number and it is usually in 2's complement form internally or a signed form and the range is from minus 2 to the power uh, 31 to plus 2 to the power 31 minus 1. That is the range in a 4 byte integer. Okay. Then there is a float data type. It has typically fractional values. And it also has large or small values. How many bytes does a float occupy? Four bytes. Although optionally it can have eight if you just say double. So double is eight bytes. But we have been mostly using four byte floating point. Please note that these values are represented as a mantisa and exponent. Okay. So there are a few bits which go for mantisa and a few bits which go for exponent. Typically, although it is not necessarily standard, exponent occupies 8 bits and mantisa occupies 24 bits. I am saying typically this is internal representation. The point is that internal representation of floating point is completely different from integer. And that is why integer numbers and floating point numbers cannot be mixed or added as we would add on the ordinary numbers. Okay. Then there is a basic data type called char, which handles what? One, one symbol, one ASCII symbol. And this is always one byte. This is also equivalent to an int. Because ASCII codes are between 0 to 255. So therefore, any character is treated internally by C++ as if it was an integer number. So you can actually assign a character value to an integer variable and the equivalent ASCII code value will get assigned there. So number, it is treated almost as a number. But when you use it as a character, it will display for example as a character, output as a character, etc. There is another data type called bool, which we will not bother about. The boolean, uh, it stands for boolean, it has only two possible values, true or false. And that is used to store any decision that you might have made in your program earlier. But we are not bothering with that uh, for the time being. Double is a version of float.
so just as int has short or long long int means 8 bytes short int means 2 bytes similarly double is a version of float double means it is double doubly wide float so that float is 8 bytes 8 bytes is how many bits 64 bits so what they do is in 64 bits they extend the exponent instead of 8 bits to 12 or 16 bits and all the remaining bits are used for mantisa so the precision is much larger if you have a 4 byte float the precision is usually 6 to 7 decimal digits only nothing more than that since most of the data types are arithmetic data types the operations will also be arithmetic type first we consider the definition of variables so how do we define integer variables for example we may say int m comma n comma p comma this is one way of defining so you write the keyword int followed by the names of the variables that you have each one gets allocated memory 4 bytes Similarly, you can define floating point variables. How do I do that? What do I write? Float. And I could have, let's say, k, x, y, etc. Similarly, I can define character variables. So, I can say char a, b, what? int and float variables are given 4 bytes each char variable is given 1 byte each fine the operations on these variables are typically of the type of arithmetic operations so first we consider expression so suppose these are the definitions which I have made earlier and suppose I say p is equal to 5 plus 3 star m minus 16 star n. So can you tell me how this expression will be evaluated? This is an expression you all understand. What will be done first? First will be which multiplication? There are two multiplications. Okay. So you know the precedence order. What is higher precedence in arithmetic operations? Multiplication and division. Next order, addition, subtraction. And if there are operations at the same level, then those operations are carried out from left to right. So ordinarily, this will be done first some result will be obtained then the expression changes it now becomes 5 plus result minus 16 star n now 16 star n is higher priority so this will be done next now the expression becomes 5 plus result 1 minus result 2 and then you add or subtract you will get the final what is important to note is that in the expression when the variables are of the same type then the result is also of the same type for example if I were to say m is equal to 7 by 3, what is the value of m? Ah, why 2 and not 2 point something? Because m is integer? No, that is not the reason. It is because 7 is integer and 3 is integer. There is a difference between the two. Please note that on the left hand side, what is written, it does not matter. For example, suppose I had said 
x is equal to 7 by 3. So, according to your logic, since x is floating point, 7 by 3 should translate into 2 point something something. That is not correct. When the expression is evaluated, C++ does not look at the left hand side at all of the assignment operation. Expression is first evaluated, independent of what it is assigned to. It may be assigned to anything in the world, but it does not matter. C++ looks only like a blinkered horse, which looks only at the street. It looks at expression. So, what is this expression x is equal to 7 by 3? Expression is 7 by 3. 7 is integer, 3 is integer. So, the division that will be done will be integer division. The result will be not 2 point something something, but just 2. And then 2 will be assigned to the left hand side. In the case of m equal to 7 by 3, it will assign m equal to 2. In the case of x equal to 7 by 3, it will assign x equal to equivalent of 2.0. That means, it will convert 2 into floating point and assign, but the expression evaluation is supreme. So, again remove this from your mind that the calculations depend upon what is the left hand side type. It has nothing to do with it. Expression is the most important. Understood? Okay. If you have a mixed mode operation, for example, suppose I say y is equal to 5.26 multiplied by m divided by 7 plus 3.28 multiplied by n divided by 2.5. So, this is an expression m and n are integer y is floating point. So, can you tell me what will be done? How will this expression be evaluated? First, it will do what? First, it will do division m by 7. Why? How many division multiplication operators are there? Two multiplications and two divisions. When the operators are at the same level of precedence, how are, is the expression evaluated? From left to right. On the left, what is the expression? 5.26 into m. So, this will be evaluated first. Because this is left to right. Now, notice that when you evaluate this, m is integer, 5.26 is floating point. So, what will happen? m will be converted to floating point, will be multiplied by 5.26 and the result will be floating point. After that, the floating point result will be divided by 7. Now, what is to be divided by is floating point, what dividend is integer. So, what will happen? 7 will get converted first to floating point and the result will be floating point. That is how this expression will work correctly. Suppose you have written m by 7 first and then said multiply by this. Then what would have happened? m is integer, 7 is integer, integer division would have resulted, you would have lost the fraction, the result would be integer. Now that when it is multiplied by 5.26, that integer will be converted to floating point. But already you have lost some fraction. So it is very, very important to remember this that when you have a mixed mode operation, then expression first decides what is to be calculated. First, what is to be calculated next. Then when it decides it has to calculate this, this meaning there are two terms and some operation, division, star, plus, minus, and there are two operands. So then it will examine whether operands are of the same type. If operands are of the same type, result will be of that. If operands are of different type, integer will be converted to floating point and then the result will be floating point. And this is applied piece by piece to the entire expression. After you have calculated the value of the entire expression, then you get one result value. It could be integer or floating point, you don't know what it is. That value is now assigned to the left hand side variable. So, that is the time when the C++ compiler looks at y, not before that. It does not therefore matter what is y, is it integer, character, float, does not matter. It does not look at y at all, till it has calculated the entire expression. 
it has got one value now now it will say okay i got this value i have this variable now if this variable is integer value is integer i assign if variable is float value is int i convert into floating point say 13 hoga 13.0 i will assign if in uh, the variable is integer and the value is float say i say n is equal to some value which is 7.35 so what will get assigned to n if n is integer huh? integer so what it will do it will no, it will not give any error n is equal to 7.5 is a valid statement or 7.35 what it will do is it will remove all the fractional part it doesn't matter what is the fraction 7.99 hoga to bhi it will be, make it 7 only so n will have a value 7 is what is it so please make sure that you understand these basic things that whenever assignment is done at that time c++ looks at the type of the left hand side variable not till then okay till then it is evaluating expression and any long expression even if it has 35 terms so many addition subtractions brackets this that ultimately it will give you one value and that value will be either integer or float whatever is that value that is now assigned to the left hand side is that clear okay. there is an operation called modulo this is applied to integers only so for example 173 modulo 10 so what is the value 173 modulo 10 sorry 3 so this will result in a value 3 so what it does essentially it divides 173 by 10 and finds out the remainder okay what will be 1 73 divided by modulo 100 73 what is 173 modulo 1000 so you see this is how you can extract things now this modulo operator is extremely useful if you want to determine individual digits of a number for example if I have a program wherein I have defined int n and let us say I want to find out the first digit and the fourth digit of a four digit number. So suppose it's a four digit number four digit number will be what not zero 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 one is not a four digit number zero 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 one is one it's one digit number. so the what is the smallest four digit number one zero 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 one thousand what is the largest four digit number nine nine so suppose four digit number is given and now you are asked find the sum of first and the last digit so if you have given n as 5174 and you want to find out the sum of the first and the last digit then how much is that sum first digit is 5 last digit is 4 sum should be 9 how will you find out in a program now finding out last digit is simple modulo 10 so you say d1 is equal to n modulo 10 we will write a command find last digit now how will you find the first digit which I have designated by some variable say d2 sorry 
sorry divide by 1000 okay what will happen when you divide by 1000 5174 divided by 1000 ordinarily would have been 5.174 but since both are integer it will be only 5 so find first digit and now suppose you want to calculate say sum I will define an additional variable called sum here and say sum is equal to d1 plus d2. So understood? This is very simple. So let me give you a problem. Sorry, thousand digit and tens digit. See the digits in any number are counted as unit digit, tens digit, hundred place, thousand place, ten thousand place, etc. So suppose the number given is one two three four five, thousand digit is two, and tens digit is four. So sum should be six. If the number given is six seven eight nine one two three, thousand digit is nine, and ten digit is two. So the sum should be 9 plus 2 equal to 11. Suppose somebody gives you a number 3, 4, 5. So what is the thousand digit is 0 which is here non-existent plus 4 which is this digit is equal to. Suppose somebody gives you only a single digit 7 then 0, 0. Get the problem? It is important to first understand such problems. If you make a mistake in understanding, you will have a problem. Now, in the exam, sometimes I try to give an example like this, so that you will understand. But if example is not given, you should write an example. And you should write two, three examples. Kya aisa hua to this will happen, if this is so, this will happen, this is so, this will happen. And then write your program. So how will you write your program? We will write our program in this space. So we will define int n that is required. Anything else is required? Int let us say d1, d2 and also I will require int sum because I want to find out the sum. Now I start by saying c in 
n. Of course, normally you will say C out, please give the value of n, etc., etc. So, this is the number given. Now, the tenth digit is very simple. How will you find? D1 is equal to n modulo 10. But now you do not know how many digits are there. So, how will you find the thousands digit? N. Why the earlier trick will not work? N divided by thousand. Which digits? So suppose you say one, two, three, four, five divided by thousand. What will happen? How much? So you see, if the number is large, dividing by thousand will not help. Because you will get all the punchalla of the all the earlier digits there as division by thousand. So what should you do? Yes. So divide by ten thousand you will get 12. Suppose the value was 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, you would have got 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, whatever is that number, that number ends with the thousand digit. So, for that new number, if you get the last digit, you got the thousand digit. So, the correct thing will be n divided by thousand modulo 10. Sorry? N modulo, oh, oh, so it should be what? So this is not correct. It should be N divided by 100. Because you see, I am not getting the units digit. I want the tens digit. Same logic will apply. Same logic will apply if 10 digit, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the number. Then if I say simply n modulo 10, uh, n modulo 100, let us say, or n divided by 100, I will not get the 10 digit. N, uh, n divided by 10, I will not get the 10 digit. I will get all the digits before that. So I first find out n divided by 100 and then take modulo 10. But what number will I get? n divided by 10 modulo 10. Apply this logic to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the number. What is n divided by 100? 1, 2, 3. The last digit is 100th place digit, not the 10th place digit. What we want is 4, not 3. So, it should be n divided by 100. It should be n divided by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 10 will give you what? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 is the last digit of that n divided by 10. And when you take modulo of that, you will get the last digit. Is this clear to everybody? So, these are simple tricks, but where we can make a mistake. Now, how did we correct ourselves? It was a mistake first, but somebody thought. And how did somebody think? That somebody actually calculated. Okay, if this is the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what will happen? If I divide by 100, what will happen? If I divide by 10, what will happen? If I take modulo 10, what will happen? You should never answer a question without trying out one such value. And whether example is given or not, it doesn't matter. You should write an example. You should write an example of a larger number, smaller number, and see whether your program works correctly. Got it? So, while it is simple, but you can make a very simple mistake and you may get a zero. Whereas you actually understand what it is. But you are not able to correctly judge what should be right. And this mistake may happen anytime. Is that clear? 
So always construct a small example quickly. It will take one minute more, half a minute more, nothing more than. Can I consider that you have understood expression evaluation, use of modulo, conversion from integer to floating point, floating point to integer, etc., etc. Okay, no confusion there. Particularly, two things to remember. Integer divided by integer gets you an integer and you lose fractional part. But floating point divided by integer, integer is converted to floating. Similarly, in assignment, floating point assigned to a floating point value, no problem. Floating point assigned to an integer value, no problem. X is equal to 10. 10 will become 10.0. But integer assigned to a floating point value, you lose fraction. N is equal to 17.53. N will remain only 70 if the n is defined as integer, fine? So no issue on that.